The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, And to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? Let's talk about angels. In the early church, there were many false teachers and they were teaching that people could come to God by worshiping angels. They could approach God through the angels. And there are still people today that believe that. And I would like to clarify what angels do and what is the purpose of angels. They are definitely not meant to be worshipped and revered. Angels do many things. All that angels do is in reference to God and according to his will. The good angels worship God and he, they serve him while also having a role in the world that the Lord created. There are different types of angels with unique roles. Archangels, Cherubim, and Seraphim. In the Bible, Michael the Archangel is listed as being the chief of angels and seems to have a special role regarding Israel in Daniel 10, 13 and 12 and 1. In addition, the other named angel in scripture is Gabriel and he was tasked with delivering important messages to Daniel, Zechariah, and Mary. Look up Daniel 8, 15 through 26, Luke 1, 11 through 17. Some angels have specific tasks in the future, such as the seven angels in charge of sounding the seven trumpets during the tribulation, Revelation 8, 6 through 9, and 19. The Bible tells us that angels worship the Lord and offer praises to him. Psalm 148 and 2. Thousands upon thousands of angels worship the Lord, bringing him glory in Hebrews 12:22. At certain times, God calls angels to present themselves before him in Job 1:6. Angels also serve God and carry out his commandments. Psalm 103.20. Some of these commandments include being sent by God to answer prayer, Daniel 10.12, and serve and protect believers in Psalm 34.7. At times, God uses his angels as instruments of judgment on unbelieving and rebellious people and nations, Genesis 19.13, Acts 12.23. Everything that angels do is in accordance with the will of God. Scriptures indicate that angels observe Christians and their lives. Angels cannot experience salvation and they are interested in the conversion experience of individuals and the application of God's grace. Salvation through Jesus' death and resurrection is such an amazing event that angels desire to investigate the preaching of the gospel. It is also so wonderful that even the angels are eagle, eagerly watching these things happen. Look up 1 Peter 1.12. Angels have delivered messages to humans that have provided guidance and encouragement. Daniel 10.12, Matthew 1.20 and 21. Angels are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. At the end of a believer's life, angels provide care at the time of death. Luke 16, 22. Scripture shows angels involved in battles in the spiritual realm. Daniel 10, 13, Jude 1, 9, and Revelations 12, 7 to 9. We may be unaware of the angelic battles, but they do happen. Angels also are part of our new epochs, History. Angels were present when the earth was created, giving praise to God. At the giving of the law to Moses, angels were present and had a part in it. Acts 7.53 At the first coming of Jesus into the world, 
angels announced his birth. Luke 2, 10 through 11. At the rapture, the archangel, presumably Michael, will be present and call out. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. And during the tribulation, Jesus' return, the millennial kingdom, and the eternal state, angels will have plenty to do. Issuing punishment from God, binding Satan, and measuring the new Jerusalem. Revelations 5, 11 through 12, 8, verses 2 to 3. Christians can learn much from the example of angels about obeying the Lord and praising his holy name. Truly, we can add our praises with the angels, worship and say with the psalmist, let every creature praise the Lord, shout praises to the Lord. Psalm 150, verse 6. So this clarifies what angels do and what angels do not do. And we are to see the angels, read about them, study what they do, and say thank you to them regarding their position according to the purposes and the plans that God has for our lives. Angels are to assist us. Angels are to protect us. The ones that have been chosen to the heirs of salvation. But our first and foremost concern and our worship goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and our Savior. We are not to worship. We are not to worship Mary. We are not to worship idols. We are not to worship other gods. We are not to worship angels. Jesus Christ is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We can only go to the Father except when we go through Jesus. He is the way. And so even Mary said, do what my son says to do. Do what he says. We are not supposed to worship anything or anyone other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And today the Lord says to us to worship him without hesitation. He says, my grace is not earned, my grace, it's given. You don't need to do anything but come to me, trust in me and rest in me. I am perfect in compassion and love that comforts and heals your soul. You need not to go to man to confess your sins. You can confess to me. I am the ultimate authority, the only one that can forgive your sins. For God gave me the authority. My child, read the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and you will read all about the authority the Father has given me. You can come to me. I am with you in the broken places, ready to pour out my mercy and grace upon you. And in my presence, you will experience my power through the peace that you feel in being assured that I will overcome whatever is overcoming you. You can feel the quiet assurance that I am with you. And if you look behind you, you will see my footprints. My footprints are always there. They are always there. I walk behind you. I walk in front of you. I walk to the right of you. I walk to the left of you. The height, the breadth, the length, the depth of my love for you can never be taken away, it cannot change, it will not be altered by anything that you say or you do, my child. My Holy Spirit, my spirit will convict you, but my love will never be removed from you. The biggest torment that 
my people go through is believing that they are unloved. Do not go through that torment today. Do not go through the misery and the fear and the torment of feeling unloved, of feeling unwanted, of feeling unworthy, of feeling that you are not enough. I say to you, my child, today, you are my biggest masterpiece. I gave you free will, I gave you a mind, I gave you emotions, I gave you the ability to articulate, the ability to express love, the ability to give love. I gave you emotions, just like I have emotions. You are created in my image. Just as you feel, I felt. Just as you suffer, I suffered. Just as you have broken heartedness, I know what it is to have a broken heart. I know what it is to be deceived. I know what it is to be lied to. So do not fear my child. Never fear that my love will be removed from you. The earth may pass away, but my love will never cease for you, my child. Rest assured. Sleep in peace. Be in peace. Do not fear love. Do not fear. Do not be scared of giving love or receiving love. For you are my greatest masterpiece of love. You love as I love. Come to me without hesitations. You will always be accepted. My arms are always open wide for you. My arms are always ready to welcome you, my child. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for this message. I thank you, God, for the angels that you have assigned to us, my Father. I thank you, O oh God, for whatever work they do in our lives, my Father, according to your perfect will, my Father. Thank you for assigning angels to us, that they will help us, my Father, that they will protect us, that they will minister to us in times of need, and these are angels that you have assigned, O oh God, for the heirs of your salvation. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you do for us to protect us, to defend us, to lead us, to guide us. Father God, on our way home to you, my God. Thank you, Lord God, for the protection and the love and the wisdom that you provide for us each day. Thank you for defending us in the spiritual realm when we don't even see it. Thank you for all the things that you do, my Father, that we have no knowledge because we cannot see the spiritual realm. But you see the spiritual realm. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords of the earth and everything under the earth, my Father. For angels are subject to you, my God. They sing praises to your name as we sing praises to your name. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. Father, in your Son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>